All right, so one of the things that you must know how to do in both geometry and trigonometry is solve triangle problems. And what that means is given a triangle, you need to find all the angles of that triangle and all the sides. Now in geometry, these type of problems are much easier and you usually use things like the Pythagorean theorem and uh, they're not too difficult, but as you get into trigonometry, the problems get much more interesting and challenging and you're gonna have to use things like the law of sines and cosines. And what I have for you here is an example problem where we're going to be using the law of cosines. And uh, let me uh, basically show you the problem. We're actually looking at it right here. So we have a triangle where angle B is 20 degrees, length A is 120, and length C is 100. So what you need to do is construct a triangle, and you got to figure out where angle A, B, and C is and where these lengths are, and then you got to find all the angles and sides of that triangle. This is not that easy. Uh, but uh, before I actually show you this problem, and the problem, the solution to this, comes from my pre-calculus course. And if you need additional help uh, with the law of sines, cosines, or trigonometry, or just more advanced mathematics, Check out the link to my pre-calculus course. You'll find it in the description of this video. But uh, let me go ahead and show you the law of cosines. Now, there's different versions of the law of cosines, but this is just basically one of them. And what we have is a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times cosine a. Now, there's a version for this for cosine uh, b, cosine c, and these variables would change. But this is basically the law of cosines or one part of it. And if you look here, it looks pretty similar to the Pythagorean theorem. And actually the Pythagorean theorem is a special case scenario for the law of cosines. All right, so um, uh, again, this video that I'm gonna show you here in a second is the full solution to this one problem. And this is out of my main instructional courses. So hopefully you can figure this out, but if you can't, I'm gonna give you a full detailed uh, rundown on how to, how to solve this particular triangle problem using the law of cosines, and enjoy the video. Okay, so um, our first problem, we have an angle, and then we have two sides. All right, so let's just uh, sketch this out. Remember, um, you always wanna do the best uh, sketch you know, uh, possible. So we have 20 degrees as angle B, so this kind of looks like it might be 20 degrees. And then we have two sides right here, A and C. So let's put them uh, right here for now. And we'll make uh, A uh, 120 uh, versus C uh, being one, 100. In other words, I want to make this longer is guess what I wanted to say. And then obviously B will be opposite of this angle. So that's what we, uh, our scenario looks like. So this appears to be an SAS situation. So we want to go ahead and start, uh, you know, uh, taking some actions to solve this problem. Now, what do we have to do? Well, we need to get this third side um, and then we'll have all three sides. And then after that, we need to get two more angles. Okay, that's what it means to solve the triangle. So let's go ahead and start. And remember, you always need to start with the law of sines. Okay, that's what you want to be doing here with these cosine type problems is solve for the side such that you can use the law of sine. So I have one angle here, 20 degrees. The only way I'm gonna be, be able to use the law of sines is to get the respective side uh, with that angle. So in other words, if I have angle B, I need uh, length B. So we're gonna solve for B first. And when we do that, we need to pick the right um, formula from the law of cosine. So there's uh, several different formulas. There's the standard form and then the uh, alternate form. The standard form gives us the lengths, okay, for solving for uh, length. In this case, I'm solving for length B. So I want to be going for the B squared formula because my inputs here are going to be, I have angle B, so I could take the cosine of that, and I also have um, A. And I also have, let's use another color here, C, okay? So 
I can I have all the necessary information here to find b squared. If I take the square root of b squared, I'll get length b. And that's what I need right here. So let's go ahead and just plug all this in. So b squared is going to be 120 squared. That's my a. Just kind of just following uh, simple substitution here. C is going to be 100 squared minus 2 times a times c is 2 times 120 times 100 times the cosine of b, which is 20 degrees. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify. So this is the, the math. You want to show your steps here, okay? I'm not going to bore you. 120 squared is this, 100 squared is this, minus 2 times 1, uh, 20 times 100 is that times cosine 20. And when we put all of this now into our calculator, you do want to show some work just to show that you're, you know, some uh, steps so you can track to make sure you don't make a mistake. But uh, at this point, this would be a good point here. You can plug everything into your calculator and get your B squared value. So it should come out to be around 1847.37 but I don't want b squared, I want b, so I need to take the square root of both sides and I get b is equal to the square root of uh, 1847.37 which is approximately 42.98. Okay, so that means I got uh, b, now it's 42.98 and I have angle b, so this is the perfect um, ratio to set up for the um, law of sine. So, I have all three sides now, okay, so sine of 20 over uh, the respective length, okay, which is 42.98, I can go ahead and start solving for angle. So let's start solving for the biggest angle here. Let's go for angle A. So I have to use its length down here. So sine A over 120 is the same thing as sine 20 or equal to sine 20 over 42.98. Again, an illustration of the law of signs and right now I know all of your experts out there how to do this I'm not going to bore you with this because I just don't uh, want to spend too much time in this video more than we have to so we get sine a is equal to this decimal right here 0.9549189669 okay but I don't want sine a I want angle a so I have to take the arc sine of this value and when I do that I get 72.73 degrees. Okay, so uh, looking pretty good here. Let's go and update our situation. So I had B, okay, I already was given C, and I was given uh, A, and now I just found uh, B or A, right, right here, and I already had B right there, angle B. Okay, so let's just take a look at this. Now, if I have two angles of a triangle, let's focus in right here. If I have this angle and this angle, it's not a problem for me to find this last angle. Okay, so I would just take 180 degrees, 180, and minus these two angles, and I would get my final angle C. But let's study this picture here for a second. Okay, and you can see right here, this is not possible. Why isn't this possible? Why, are, why do we have a problem here? Well, if this is 87.27 degrees, okay, its amount is, its respective leg, okay, or its side is 100, okay? And that, the bigger the angle, the longer the leg. But over here, angle A has a length of 120, but a smaller angle. That can't happen, okay? Because this angle is bigger than this angle, this side is gonna be bigger than that side. But we have a problem here. So remember, we had side, angle, side, and maybe this is a, a side, side, angle, ambiguous type situation, all right? So how do we address this? Well, um, remember, again, I'm counting on you to, for you to have mastered the law of science. So what we can do is this. So I'm thinking, okay, let's, we're not going to panic here because we did everything right. We can take our answer, okay, remember our 72.73 answer up here. Okay, that's what we, what we got as angle A. But there's another angle that has that same sine value, all right? What is it? Well, it's 180 degrees minus that answer, 
107.27 also has that same sine value, this uh, angle right there. All right, now let's kind of plug it uh, 107.27 in as angle A and see how this works. Okay, this is clearly the biggest angle and angle A has the biggest side. So if this is 107.27, just by taking 180 degrees and subtracting our two angles, now 20 and this angle, we get 52.7 for angle C. So that is uh, less than angle A's uh, side. Okay, so this looks good. It's making sense. And then B, okay, it's the smallest angle, so it should have the smallest side. And in fact, it does. Okay, so again, you got to be on a lookout. You got to be thinking to yourself the entire time that I draw the the picture right. You know, is there an issue? And and when something doesn't make sense, you're going to have to tie everything in uh, together. All right, so let's move on to our next problem here.